Hi, welcome to a new episode, in the Internet Surfer, hosting the most horror, and creepiest stories, from Reddit. Please, don't forget, to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. Night Shift Gas Station Workers, What is the creepiest thing you have ever seen during your graveyard shift? r slash ask reddit. I do not know about creepy, but it was weird. I worked the graveyard shift in an inner city gas station. There were a few homeless guys who would come in, mostly they were older and nice guys to deal with. One guy would come in every night about the same time and stand in front of the drink fridge for 10 minutes or so. He would agonize over his choice, he would go to pick up a can then change his mind and shut the fridge door. Then stand for a few more minutes and stare. Eventually he would choose a drink, most often a can of Fanta, then he would pay with 5 and 10 cent coins. One night he came in and the usual dance ensued. He eventually picked out a Fanta and paid with his low denomination coins then left. A few hours later he came back, this was unusual. He went to the fridge and grabbed three cans of Fanta, no waiting staring. He had never bought more than one can at a time before. He put the cans on the counter and went back and got a few bags of snack food, chips, chocolate bars etc. Then he came back and pulled out a stack of $50 notes, had to be a couple of thousand there. I was a bit stunned. Next day he was back with 5 and 10 cent coins again. My first job was at a local gas station. I was 18 and worked there for about two years, and it will always remain as the worst job I have ever had. I have quite a few stories, so I will just list them as I remember them. For the record, I am a female. Yes, this is important. I would frequently be the only one to take out outside slash inside trash. One night I was hauling my cart between pumps picking up loose garbage when a man, looking to be around late twenties, early thirties, approached me and asked if I had a boyfriend. Immediately feeling uncomfortable, I laughed nervously and said no. Which I regret but to be honest I doubt saying yes would have made him leave me alone. He then proceeded to ask if I was fifteen, all while following me very, very closely. I told him no, dropped the handle of my cart, and went inside where I could be around people. I hid in the kitchen until he left. A man who was obviously high on something made me watch him try on cowboy hats while asking if he looked fashionable. He then proceeded to buy every single bottle of Pepsi we had. The cashier had to help him carry it out in boxes. He was with a random old white guy who kept running his hand up and down his back. It was strange but luckily, they seemed harmless. Had a man whip out his cell phone and record us without our consent. He had read my name tag and so he kept screaming across the store H-E-Y, my name, and would not leave us alone. We had to call the police officers. He then proceeded to try and get in a physical fight with one of our new cooks, who was a hot-headed teenager that I went to school with. It was a mess to say the least, but luckily no one got hurt. When I went to clean the bathrooms one night I came across a regular who was infamous for having sex with truckers outside in the parking lot and hanging around all hours of the day stealing things. She was strange but overall harmless. She was wearing a cheap wig that was not on properly and her face was bright red. She had been crying. I tried to avoid her because it was an overall uncomfortable situation, but she called me over and asked if she was pretty. I told her she was because she seemed like she could use it. She smiled, cleaned up, and left. Did not see her again after that until she returned a few months later with a shaved head. At about 3 a.m. one night I had a woman come in. Insanely skinny, blonde thinning hair and wearing what looked like pajamas. Nothing out of the ordinary about her so I only really glanced up as I buzzed her in, called out a quick greeting and went back to cleaning. After about two to three minutes though I look up and she is standing about four feet from the counter just staring at me. Completely blank, unwavering kind of stare. It startled me a little and I asked her if I could help her with anything. But she did not reply and just continued to stare. 
She eventually began looking around the store, but she did not take her eyes off me the entire time. Even walking backwards at some point so she would not break eye contact. After she grabs some things, she comes back to the counter. Still staring but also muttering something under her breath. It was hard to hear what she was saying but I managed to make out a brand of smokes after getting her to repeat it several times. I get them for her, scan all her things and she pay. Eyes still locked on me and showing no emotional at all. It was getting unnerving at this point, and I was looking forward to getting her out the door. As I am handing over her change though she suddenly smiles. Which would ease the tension if she did not also start to laugh. It was a raspy laugh, a cross between that croaky noise the grudge makes and a typical witch's laugh. A cackle, I guess. I tried not to react too much and told her to have a good night and took a few steps back from the counter. We were both frozen. Her laughing and me having no idea what to do. She continued her cackling and staring for a few minutes and then left, walking backwards again so she could keep looking at me. I felt really freaked out at that point but figured she was just drunk, high, or just had some stuff going on. She was outside now and had wandered off, so I went back to cleaning and tried to shake the whole moment off. I was out in the store mopping about an hour later when I heard a thud against the window. The whole front of our store is just glass panels, and the noise came from right beside me. I looked up and this damn woman is back. Her hand is pushed up against the window and she is laughing again. I could just hear it as I was so close to the door. I must have really jumped at the sight of her because she got a kick out of it laughing even more and smacking her hand on the window repeatedly. I thought man the mopping and went back behind the counter. I ended up staying in the back room where all our security screens are and waiting for her to leave. It took around 45 minutes for her to clear off. The whole time just banging on the window, and I assume still laughing. I am glad our doors are locked overnight because I would not have liked to have been on the same side of the counter as her. I am not sure what her deal was, and I doubt she posed any real threat but dang it really freaked me out. I have seen her a few times since then. Just wandering past on the footpath outside but she has never come in or hung around again. Alone at 1.30 am cleaning the store. I had already cleaned the men's bathrooms, wiped mirrors, and faucets, gave the bowl a scrub etc. Came back with the mop to do the floors and there was a complete outfit in the toilet with a massive stuff on it. Shoes first, then socks, jocks, tracksuit pants underwear, t-shirt, and a massive stuff. I ran to the office, locked myself in and reviewed the security footage. It only showed me in the store the entire time. No customers and I had to manually press the green exit button to open doors for people to get in and out from my safety cage. Boss always did a sight walk with me before they left to make sure I was alone. The next night it was sit on the stall door. Same deal, all alone. Nothing after that except ten glass bottles flying off the shelves on front of two police officers and shattering. Oddly still my favorite job ever. Not creepy but indeed scary. My first job, second night of working nights, so I still had a trainer working with me. A guy walks in with his throat slit asking to use the phone. Pretty stunned I just said, yeah but I'm going to call 911 first. He told me that that is what he was going to do, so he will just be outside sitting in his gray van. His wife got mad and tried to kill him and he somehow got out. Never heard more from it. A few months later a big biker guy came in with road rash all over his bald head and face, I freaked and was like, dude are you alright? He then informed me that he was fine, he was just on break from the haunted trail down the road. For some reason it scared me worse than the guy who was injured. I did not work at a gas station, but I did work graveyard shift at a warehouse doing security. The job entailed sitting in a box all night watching our four working cameras, listening to the radio, and logging in a semi-trailer perhaps once every three to four hour. 
The town itself was unsure, and I was surrounded by bars and railroad tracks, so I frequently had to chase folks off the property, including a terminated employee of the warehouse who was looking to gain entry, to ask for his job back. At 1 a.m., on a holiday weekend. One morning, around 3 a.m., I had dozed off slightly, and the sound of screaming very nearby startled me awake. As soon as I was alert and frantically checking the cameras, it stopped, and I decided I had dreamed it. I nervously turned on my radio and started reading. About five minutes later I heard it again, and it sounded like it came from the alley between the buildings. I froze, suitably terrified. It did not sound like a drunk person goofing off, or a domestic disturbance, one of the houses in the area was known for this. It was distinctly male voice, screaming in a ragged, gasp, repeated burst, which would trail off into words that I could not understand, and at one point, the most hair-raising, psychotic laughter. It was a dark and rainy night, and I could not see anything on the cameras. So, being a tiny 19-year-old female with a bit of a chihuahua complex, I grabbed my flashlight, phone, and pepper spray and searched the grounds for the source of the screaming. As I was returning, one of the regular night truck drivers pulled into the lot, and I got him to search the premises with me as well. We heard it again while we were in the warehouse, in the back part of the building near the train yard. It sounded like whoever slash whatever it was heading up the tracks. The seasoned, tough trucker I was with said, Jesus that's creepy. Stay in the building tonight, and if you get in trouble for it, I'll talk to your boss in the morning. There is not much more of an explanation that it being a drug out or mentally ill hobo, but I wish I could convey what a terrifying experience it was. Not creepy, but the most interesting thing to happen to me on night shift. It was not terribly unusual to have people pull into our parking lot when they got pulled over for speeding, because it was one of the few brightly lit, mostly empty lots on that stretch of road. So, one night, a guy pulls into our lot with a police car right behind him, and routine until the police officer got out of his car, pulled a gun, and started yelling at the guy to get out of the car. Then like five more police cars pulled in behind them, some also pulling guns, some getting the K-9 dogs out, and I decided it would be wise to lock the door until this blew over. The police officers took the guy into custody without incident, popped their heads into the store to let me know they were going to tow the guy's car, so it was not blocking the dumpster, and left. I checked the news a few days later, and apparently the guy had been dealing drugs in the quality dairy parking lot up the road and led the police officers on a high-speed chase before surrendering in front of my store. Not a worker but a customer. I used to have to travel across a few states to see my mom. Well, I always drove through a small part of West Virginia. Before I continue, let me just say that parts of WV are beautiful and most of the time the people are nice but like everywhere else there is a small portion of the creepy and intimidating. Anyways, I had to stop a few times either on my way to or coming home from her house to get gas in WV. Always during the day because in these parts gas stations are not always self-serve and rarely open late. This one time I made a few detours to Site C and it was dark, and my gas light was on. I still had about 300 miles to go so I had to stop somewhere. I ended up stopping at the next gas station that was in the middle of nowhere surrounded by woods and ran down. I parked under one of the lights next to a pump and saw that it was not self-service and did not accept cards. I would have to go in. No big deal, normally. I look around and there are no other cars, few lights, one of which lights the front of the rundown shop and, of course, it is flickering. The windows are dirty and opaque so I cannot see in but there is this neon open sign on the door. I get 10 feet from my car and stop. I just kind of stare at the shop thinking to myself about how this does not feel right, it is weird, my cell does not have service here. I just do not like it. I look around assessing my surroundings and it just screams horror movie. 
I get back in my car and decide I will try again somewhere else or take the next exit and look for something civilized, or I will run out of gas and sleep in my car until daybreak and walk somewhere with cell service. Anything would be better than going in there. Luckily, in a few miles I see an exit, take it, and follow a country road into a small town with a 24-hour gas station that did not scream deliverance. There was nothing wrong with that place and I creeped out the employee, if they could see out that disgusting window, but I trust my gut and when something does not feel right or is just too obviously horror movie moments, I try to avoid it. When I was 17, I worked at an Alsips in a small town in Texas. My shift was midnight to 8 in the morning. Nothing ever happened all night. A few customers, but in a town of only a couple thousand people it was slow. The farmers started coming in for breakfast burritos and coffee between 4 and 6. I cleaned the store, mopped floors, bagged ice, and started cooking burritos for in the morning. One night two guys came in at about 2 a.m. They just kept walking the aisles. We were the only three people in the store. I finally asked if I could help them find something. They replied that they needed directions to another town close by. I told them how to get there and they left. About half an hour later I decided to take out the trash. So, I took the big metal bar off the back door and opened it to the alley. The two guys were parked in the alley and as soon as I opened the door, they started their car and drove off. I was 17 and terrified the rest of the night but never saw them again. A store I worked at for way too long was a convenient location for county officers to exchange custody and once, at around 2 am the guy in handcuffs was bouncing all over the place while looking at me and yelling, I know you. I know you. I thought you would be dead by now. Another time a couple asked to use the bathroom, which was accessed by passing through our office slash kitchen area, so I tried to be selective when giving permission. They seemed nice so I said they could. Everything seemed okay as they went in, a brief time passed, and they left with thanks. It was not until hours later that I noticed a bit of poo hanging off the rubber hook of the plunger. Yet another time, the manager arrived to relieve me in the morning but wanted me to throw away the trash bag that was sitting in her usual parking spot. I did not see anything like that when I took the boxes out earlier so someone must have left it there recently. I wondered why they did not just put it in the dumpster as it was literally less than 5 feet away. As I go out, the first thing I notice is the pool of blood leaking all over our parking lot from it. After some timid poking with a stick, it turned out to be a deer carcass. Worked in a crappy Chevron station, one Halloween night I got asked to do a shift at a nearby store we called The Coffin. It was eight pumps and one tiny single room building that was about four feet by four feet. Just enough room for the register, cigarettes, and a stool. Also, in a neighborhood. So, I am an idiot and I leave the pillbox to have a cigarette and a guy pulls up to get gas. He starts talking to me and says he just came from a party. Says I must see his costume. I say sure because he seems harmless, and I am an idiot. He reaches into the back seat and pulls out a shotgun. A real one. I play it cool as I think if I stay friendly. He will not blow my brains all over the outside of the bulletproof glass as an ironic tribute to my stupidity. He starts chattering about how he bought it a week ago and took it dove hunting that morning. Says everyone at the part thought it was cool, then puts it back in the back of his car. At this point I begin shaking and quietly ask him if he realizes he just pulled a shotgun out in public at a gas station. He turns paler than I am now and loudly states, I'm a dumbass. He proceeds to apologize, and even offers me beer. Turned out to be a cool man, just clueless. Still scared me. A couple of months later I am doing graveyard at my home store, and I see four guys walk in looking pretty gangster, all in black hoodies, with hoods up. They go straight to the back of the store and group up talking to each other. They keep looking up at me, 
at this point I know I am about to get robbed as one of them looks out the window and says, oh shit. They bolt out the door as police officers in SWAT gear come flooding through the parking lot. Guys get tackled and arrested, police officers tell me they had just robbed two other stores and shot a clerk up the road, one police officer was driving from a crime scene and saw them enter as he sat at a traffic light in an unmarked car. Pure luck. I quit that night. Not a gas station but in college I worked at an advance auto part. My store was previously a car quest that closed at 7. We sold to commercial customers who closed at 5 or 6 so we were dead from 6 close. When advance took over, they extended our hours to 9. One night a man came in and started screaming and running around, grabbed a small child that was there with their dad. My coworker and I took the guy down and called the police. He was a routine OD for them, knew the guy by his first name. They treated him and released him from the hospital with no charges. The child was traumatized. I was working at a gas station in Germany for a few years. One night some dudes come in on their way to a party or so. After grabbing a bunch of candy and alcohol one of them came to my register and paid. He was a bit loud, yelling and talking to me about how high he is right now. When I did not react as he wanted me to, he produced cocaine, saying that he thinks that I think he would not have enough balls to take it now in front of my eyes. I said he would do it, but he really wanted to do a 500 euro bet. Taking a 500 euro bill out of his pocket, using it to snort his line, he started screaming like, yeah man you see. You were right. I've done it. Then he threw the 500 euro bill at me and left. Not a worker but a bystander. I was walking in because I was on a long road trip, trying to get some food. The guy in the 7-Eleven looked to be in his early 20s or so. There was one other guy in the shop, but I could not see his face through his biker helmet. I was 22 at the time. The guy was acting a little weird so I watched him for a bit. I guess he did not notice me because he walked into the candy section and grabbed two Snickers. Two. He put one in his pocket and went to pay for the other. People, right? Had a guy come in and he was obviously casing the place. Looking at all the cameras and not any products and the like. I had been loading cup lids when he first walked in, so I apologized and said I would be right with him, to which he responded, oh it's cool I don't need you. So as a joke I responded, oh no. And drew my finger down my face like I was crying. Now, most people would just laugh this off or joke back, right? Not this guy. He said, oh not like that. There are plenty of ways I could use you. Wow that's gross. So, I hurried on back behind the counter where the panic button and stuff are just because it is a bit safer. Not by much, but a bit. He continues weaving between the three total aisles we have looking at nothing and just waiting until the other lady in the store leaves. He comes a bit closer and asks when we close, makes another comment about using me and asks if the cameras work, they do. Before long, another customer comes in and he gets a bit spooked I guess since he leaves shortly after, but gives a few parting words, well I guess I'll be seeing you later tonight. Terrifying thank you. I texted my dad to ask if I should call the police officers and he tells me that since he did not do anything I am probs just overreacting. Two hours later, thankfully, one of the regular police officers comes in for his coffee and I run it by him. He immediately tells me to call the non-emergency line and request a special route or whatever, so I do. As soon as I tell the lady on the line what he said the lady went, he said that? This is about the time I realized my dad is an idiot when it comes to this. They had at least one police car out there the rest of the night. Saw him later too. I was taking out the trash in full view of the car and he was walking past quickly. Made a nasty face at me. 
I had a guy who walks around in torn clothes, stains galore smelling like death. Nickel and dimes galore when paying, legit thought he was homeless until I saw his multiple cars he drives which included at least three vintage Corvettes, two vintage Mustangs an incredibly nice old Cadillac, had a brand new Shelby GT, two trans arms, a camera and a brand new Corvette, dude loved his sports cars and that's the ones I personally seen, all were in incredibly nice condition. My jaw hit the floor the first time seeing him get out of a brand spanking new Corvette. There is a guy in the town where I work. He is always walking down the street looking all dirty and disheveled, in like 10 layers of destroyed clothing, pushing a shopping cart full of completely random stuff. One of my co-workers is a lifelong local, so I asked him about it, because homelessness in my area is extremely rare, non-existent. He said the guy used to be some kind of big-time engineer, made crazy money, and at one point, either came down with mental health issues or decided he did not want to work anymore. He still has a nice house and a collection of vintage cars, he just seems to prefer appearing homeless in public. OCD is a disabling mental health issue for a lot of people. It is not just you feel like cleaning more than usual or like to organize your bedroom to make it look nice. It's like driving down the road, hitting a pothole, thinking you murdered someone and spending entire days obsessively going over news articles, anything about an accident, someone hurt, a car the same color, thinking your life is over even if you couldn't find shred of evidence you hit someone. Just cannot let it go. I was not working, but my mom worked the graveyard shift and would have me sleeping on a cot behind the counter by her so she could take me to school right after work. I woke up to use the bathroom, saw an old, homeless man walk in. A rat fell off him, scurried after him for a second, then died. 10. We did have a resident giant raccoon who lived under the propane cabinet, affectionately named after one of the trucking companies. I have heard him get into it with stray cats in the lot, and, while that was scary as hell too, this sound was distinctly different. I would be more likely to consider it an animal or my imagination had I not taken that truck driver with me to look as well. Until we heard it again, I was worried he thought I was the crazy one. Worked for 7 to 11 corporate. Every employee must spend two weeks working in store. Overnight shift came, and we were helping but typically it is a single person unloading the entire truck and loading the entirety of the donuts while assisting customers overnight. Creepy part is that one night a guy came in to help as a customer. He was arrested just up the road being wanted for murder that night. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.